Today, we're going to look at the most dangerous 2-3 creatures in Magic the Gathering. I would love to start off with the Balustrade Spy. Uh, if that does not strike fear into your hearts, well, allow me to explain. This is a 4-mana 2-3 Vampire Rogue with flying. When a Balustrade Spy enters the battlefield, target player reveals cards from the top of their library until they reveal a land card, then puts those cards into their graveyard. But here's the deal, they won't find a land card. Because their whole deck is composed of spells, like uh, Seagate's Restoration, for example. So this card is like, it can be a land on one side, uh, but for the on, in terms of like the deck, it's actually going to be a spell on the front side. So when Balustrade Spy sees a Seagate Restoration, it's just going to dump it into the graveyard, along with all the other uh, lands that also double as a spell. So basically, you play Balustrade Spy, target yourself, Put your entire deck into the graveyard, and then you can choose a variety of ways of trying to win the game from there, either through, like, Dread Return of some sort. Uh, there's always going to be some Narc Amoebas maybe entering the battlefield. There's, there's, there's multitudes of combos, but it's basically like a one-card combo. Going to combo you out. So beware of the Balustrade Spy. It's a very, very, very strong card. Woody, Woolly Spider. I'm pretty sure that is a complete meme card. No meme cards, please. <laughs> okay, let's take a look at this one. Felden of the Third Path. Felden of the Third. For the artifact decks, we have a 3-mana 2-3 human artificer. Ah, uh, yes, 3-mana tap create a token that's a copy of target creature in your graveyard, except it's an artifact in addition to its other types. It gains a sacrifice it at the beginning of the next end step. It's almost like Reanimator, except for... Um, it doesn't actually reanimate, which is sort of good. <laughs> it keeps coming back over and over again. Oh, here's an oldie but a goldie, Vampire Nighthawk. This is a funny creature. It doesn't look like much, but you know what? Anything with death touch, anything with death touch and lifelink and flying, that's a recipe, that's a recipe to defend your entire board. For three mana, this is a flying death touch lifelink vampire shaman. Really have nothing else to say about that. It used to be like, I mean, it's still holding its own at like 25 cents. It used to be like a buck card because it was just like a staple in every single player's black deck. All right, here's an interesting one. Beanpot's Agent of Treachery. Now, is this thing strong? Absolutely. Was it worth being banned in historic? I don't know. This card is banned in two formats for crying out loud. Anyway, I think that's a little bit weird. Seven mana. It's a human rogue. Now, when I enter the battlefield, you gain control of target permanent. I don't know about the rest of you, but seven mana to steal something, I think that is fine. I sometimes don't even get to seven mana. I mean, some, I mostly don't get to seven mana in a lot of my games. Unless it's commander, then I have, you know, soul ring. I got everything. But if I steal one permanent, is that going to break the whole game? Uh, at the beginning of your end step, if you control three or more permanents you don't own, I get to draw three cards. Okay, great. That's great. End step, I have Ancestral Recall. But I need to steal a bunch of stuff. They're going to steal the first thing I steal. They're going to see the second thing I steal. Well, they're going to let me... Are they really going to be uh, doing absolutely nothing? Are you sending like, bumps on the log over there? Is everyone just, like playing solitaire? Is everyone on storm? Uh, I've, I've, they have to be able to interact with this before it like really goes off. That second ability sounds so win more in my opinion. But anyway, Agent of Treachery. It's a boogeyman. You beware of this thing. Rated Lex, thank you so much for your super chat. Uh, Selvala, Heart of the Wild. Savala, the three mana two three elf scout. Whenever another creature enters the battlefield, its controller may draw a card. Uh, if its power is greater than each other creature's power. Oh wow! So as we keep putting out something larger and larger and larger, we want to put out beasts, then element elementals, then Eldrazi. We keep drawing them cards. Pay green, tap, add X mana of any combination of colors where X is the greatest power among creatures you control. Woo! So we got a card draw engine and also well, engine. But, uh, and also it's ramp. It's ramp to a huge degree. Pay one, get five back. That is a deal. All right, next up, let's look at... Is Oracle of the Alpha 2-3? 
This card is such, is, this is such a weird card. Like, it doesn't even look like it's supposed to exist. This came from, I guess I was about to say it came from beta. Did it come from beta or alpha? It's the Oracle of the Alpha. The three mana, two, three bird wizard. It's got flying. And when it enters the battlefield, conjure the power nine into your library. Then shuffle. When Oracle of the Alpha attacks, scry one. As if that last part even matters. Is that even relevant? I mean, I guess it is to help you dig for your uh, power nine. Little did wizards know that you could blink Oracle of the Alpha a million times to the point where, you know, your entire library is mostly the power nine. And then, uh, I don't know, at some point you gotta draw an Ancestral Recall to get your Time Twist or get your Ancestral Recall and then do this all over again. Oracle of the Alpha. Funny card. It's a very, fu very funny card. It honestly, it doesn't even look like it breaks the game. But I've seen the, I've seen the videos uh, of Oracle of the Alpha breaking the game. Because it like puts, it's like, put ca powerful cards into your deck. Like, when is that supposed to be any good? It doesn't put it into your hand, but I guess, you know, eventually you find those cards, and then they just combo off of each other. Wait, so it adds the power nine from outside. Exactly, that's exactly. It's a, it's an arena card. So yeah, maybe if, if I didn't specify, this is an alchemy card. This is specifically made for arena. That is, uh, what's also, it's, it's made for arena. It's enforced by arena. So the, no one, we're not breaking the rules here. This is within the digital parameters of uh, Magic the Gathering Arena. And yeah, so what it put, puts Sapphire, Jet, Emerald, uh, Ruby, uh, Pearl, Black Lotus, Time Twister, Ancestral Recall, and I'm missing something. Is it another blue card? Time Walk. And Time Walk. You got one Black Lotus, five mo Moxen, and three blue cards. And they've been fearing blue ever since. Millmaster, thank you very much for your super chat. Every combo, and Elver. Player's most hated 2 3, the Archon of Emeria. It's actually interesting. This card's so powerful that it's actually wor it's worthy of vintage. It is a vintage playable card. Uh, it's a white 2 generic 2 3 Archon uh, flying. Each player can't cast more than one spell each turn. Non-basic lands your opponent's control enter the battlefield tapped. Now, it doesn't completely screw over the blue players. Because you can, like, play something on... You can play cantrip on your turn. Counter spell on their turn. But if you try to make, like, a big stack, uh, it won't work. <laughs> and also, it definitely favors the person who might have Aether Vial or something like that. But definitely, like, if you're, like, a big artifact deck that tries to recycle cards and keep moving and you have some sort of engine that shuts it all off. No engine for you. Time to go back to the basics. Beating down with two, three creatures in the air. Uh, I'm pretty sure... Okay, let's look at Wooly Spider. I'm pretty sure this is a meme card. Wooly Spider. Yeah, it's a meme card. Whenever it blocks a creature with flying, it gets plus zero, plus two. It's got reach! It can hold off that Archon of Emeria. Oh, Archon of Emeria, beware. There's spiders in the Ice Age. <laughs> There's spiders. Ooh, this is a great one. The Grand Arbiter. My friend Rodney hates this card. It's a four, uh, four mana human advisor. White spells you cast cost one less to cast, but the blue spells cost one less to cast as well. But here's the real kicker. Spells your opponent's cast cost one more to cast. So it's it's not even like Rhystic Study where you have the option. I mean, you are not allowed to play your card unless you actually have that extra one. The Arbiter is a conduit of justice, a will so disciplined that it dispenses justice without ego or remorse. And then my favorite memory with this card is my friend plays it, and then I copy with Phantasmal Image. So I also have a Grand Arbiter, and then also so suddenly my spells cost exactly what they're supposed to cast. Be, uh, because it costs one more, but it also costs one less because I have my own Grand Arbiter. And everyone else has to spend two more. Sucked for them, not for me. Okay, we got King Ginger's uh, Aili Eternal Pilgrim. Eternal! Is that two mana? It's a white black core cleric. It's got death touch. Pay one, sacrifice another creature. You're going to gain a little bit of life off of this. Uh, equal to the sacrificed creature's toughness. It is a black white one generic uh, activated ability. Sack another creature. Exile target non-land permanent. Oh my goodness. 
That's a very nice throw if you exile that permanent. Activate this ability only if you have at least 10 life more than your starting life total. Well, a little bit of a, you know, a little, a little bit of an achievement unlocked. You get to 30, okay, I guess in commander you get to 50 life, which should be no problem, right? And all of a sudden you can start sacking things to exile them. Beware of that, I Lee. Is that Stoneforge Mystic? Or the one, it's not Stoneforge Mystic, it's like a descendant of the Stoneforge Mystics. Okay, next up, let's look at turn one mist land drop. Thank you very much for your super chat. The Barrow Nollar. The Marrow Nar. Uh, five mana for a two, three. All rats have fear. So you're all. It's like. <laughs> So it's working the wrong way. If someone read this, they'd be like, oh, those rats are scared. No, everyone is scared of those rats. Tap, sacrifice a rat, put X11 one, one black rat creature tokens into play where X is the number of rats you control. That can get out of hand really quickly. You sack your rats to get more rats. It's very, very rat-like. You know, I've seen those videos where the whole room is just full of mice and rats. Anyone scared of rats? Anyone scared of mice? I think mice are really cute. Until I know they're in my home and they're leaving like poop in my bed and stuff like that. Then it gets creepy. Then I'm very paranoid. I'm sleeping with mice. It's awful. Okay, next up. Let's take a look at Toad's Rotten to the Core. Oh, Rotten. Hold on. Are you, are you making a joke? Are you making a funny? I think you were making a... Oh, you are making a funny, aren't you? Okay, next up, let's take a look at... She's just a core like Nahiri. And Nahiri is also apparently not the Stoneforge mystic. Okay, next up, let's take a look at Jay's Gw Gwenna. Eyes of Gaia. A three mana, two, three elf druid scout. Tap, add two mana in any combination of colors. Spend this mana only to cast creature spells or activated abilities of a creature or creature card. Whenever you cast a creature spell with power 5 or greater, put a plus 1 plus 1 counter on Gwenna, Eyes of Gaia, and untap it. So we have, it's like super mana ramp. And if we put something big on here, uh, so we put something big out, we get to untap it, get more mana, and also it gets bigger. Very nice. Next super chat coming from Pacers Fan Forever. Ooh, the Ramen App Ruins. Cards broke. Oh, do you, oh, oh, sorry. No, not ruins. Ramunap, Ramunap Excavate. That's what I thought it was. Like, I see this red card come up. That's not it. The Excavator. The three mana Naga Cleric. You may play lands from your graveyard. And that doesn't sound too impressive. Like, okay, you can play your lands from your graveyard. Big deal. It's only one land per turn. But what if? What if it were a wasteland? And you know what? Let's say there's no wasteland in the format. What if it's even Ghost Quarter? I've seen people get ghost quartered out of the game because you don't have... <laughs> not every deck has more than four basic lands. Uh, so eventually you lose your basic lands, then you just lo lose the rest of the lands from your from your deck. And then also Ramanark Excavator works really well with what's it called? Um, Azusa, where you can play multiple lands per turn. So you'd be like ghost quarter, ghost quarter, or wasteland, wasteland. Sick card. Yeah, uh, it's pretty broken. It's actually really broken if you've got the synergy for it. You do have to prolong the game. Usually, usually this is like a grindy card, if anything else. Welcome, Spirit Squad. I haven't caught one of these in a while. You already get my main home. No, we have not got it. Let's do it just for you. The Spell Queller. Quelling them spells. It is a three mana spirit with flash and flying. So because it has flash, you're never going to see it coming. Or at least you should. You're up against a spirit deck. They have three mana up. Like, what else could they have? I mean, I guess they could have rattle chains. They could have... There was, there's a rattle chains in play. Anything can show up. When it enters the battlefield, exile target spell with converted mana cost four or less. And when it leaves the battlefield, uh, the exiled card's owner may cast that card without paying its mana cost. This in combination with the fairy is very good. This just by itself is amazing. Uh, hitting... What is it? There's a very certain type of card that if you eat it up, like it doesn't matter even if Spell Queller dies. Sometimes... Well, anyway, it's a fantastic versus combo. It's it's really huge tempo breaker. Your opponent plays a creature, you spell queller it. Well, I guess you aren't so ahead after all. I'm turning the corner with my spell queller. But there is some um 
There's a card type that if I quell it, even after my spell queller dies, it like it doesn't even matter if it goes back on the stack. It's like useless. But I can't remember what that is though. Anyway, huge fan, huge fan of Spirits and Pioneer. Shout out to uh, shout out to the Spirit Squad and also MTG Ectoplasm for the uh, for the spell queller. Fan fantastic favorite of the of the of the spirits. Also, go check out. Re is it still rearranged AS? Your your YouTube channel, or maybe you renamed it to Spirit Squad. Either way, for your spirit needs, go check them out. All right, next up, let's take a look at Kagan. We've got Kagan, one of my favorite commanders, Ranrar the Ever Watchful. Is it? It's Ranrar. We all love Ranrar. Ranrar the Ever Watchful. Um, what's it called? Uh. Oh, counter spells. That's what I was thinking of. Yeah, if you if you spell queller a counter spell, and then spell queller dies, the counter spell is basically dead. That's was it. That's what it was. It's been a while. So, you know, I haven't played Pioneer Spirits in a year. You know, I'm a little rusty on that archetype. Okay, we got Ranar the Ever Watchful, a four mana two three Spirit Warrior with vigilance and flying. The first card you foretell each turn costs zero to foretell. That is a good price. And whenever you exile one or more cards from your hand and or permanence from the battlefield, create a 1-1 one, one white spirit creature token with flying. We love it. It's an army in a can. You better deal with the Ranar before the Ranar deals with you. Ooh, I like this one. Murderous Rider. The multi-dimensional card. So it's like a, it's a 2-3 three for 3 mana. But it's got Swift End for 3 mana. You could destroy a creature or a Planeswalker. But you do lose 2 life. But, you know, like, whatever. Life is meant to be... You gotta live a little. You gotta live a little when you play the Swift End. Uh, and then after you've killed a creature or a Planeswalker, you can also just cast it as a creature. And it's simply a lifelink creature. And when it dies, you put it on the bottom of its owner's library. Ready to come back whenever you want. I want a modern RC, RQ when an opponent was forced to cast their his bolt on himself because I had hex ray. <laughs> That's funny. So for, like from the spell queller story. That happens. It happens. Anyway, spell queller. Excellent card. Uh, next super chat, we've got Steve Cooper at La Palani. Uh, this is the nest tender. He also her eggs, danger, and EDH, and donate uh, two other two for two other cards in chat. Okay, at La Palani. Sounds the name of a spaghetti, to be honest. Okay, but it's a 4 mana, 2, 3 human shaman. Pay 2, tap. Create an egg. You get an egg creature token with Defenderling. What are, what are you going to do with this thing? Pretty pretty sad, in my opinion. Whenever an egg you control dies, however, reveal cards from the top of your library until you reveal a creature card. Put that card onto the battlefield! Uh, and the rest on the bottom of your library in a random order. Oh, that's insane. It's so like every single time the egg dies, it's like a cascade into random creature. The first creature. And I guess you just want to put like, this is, this is your commander. So you'll just put this on the battlefield and just have only gigantic creatures uh, left in your deck. So it doesn't even matter that the eggs have defender. Like, if someone comes attacking, then I mean, they're going to regret it. That's when you start to goad them to come at you, right? You got to taunt them. Taunt them and they will attack. All right, two super chats, starting with Cunning Linguist, Lathril. Blade of the Elves. Uh, it's a four mana. Elf Noble with Menace. Blade of the Elves deals combat damage to a player. Create that many 1-1 one, one green Elf Warrior creature tokens. So, like, if I deal two damage, I get two tokens. And it's got Menace. That's hard to block. And that's going to be hard to block that Elf Army. Tap. Tap ten untapped Elves you control. Semico semicolon. Uh, each opponent loses ten life and you gain ten life. Excellent. That's Synergy. Makes its own army, makes its own life, creates its own luck. Okay, next up, okay, our second donation will go to Arrow Amara, Voice of the Conclave. Oops, no, this is the wrong Amara. This is not even a real card. Okay, three mana for uh, Convoking Elf Cleric. Very nice picture, though. Well, when, it, when Amara enters the battlefield, draft a card from Amara Voice of the Conclave spellbook. What the hell is that? I don't even know what's going to happen here. Is that a good thing? No, it's easy to get out. I mean, you have just have a few creatures out. I mean, you can just ramp this thing onto the battlefield. I honestly cannot attest to how good or bad this card is. 
Could be terrible. I'm just going to assume it's a good card. You guys must love it. Okay, next up. Um, Hrodich with Biovisionary. <laughs> it's dangerous if they pull off the combo. So, it's a three three mana human wizard. At the beginning of the end step, if you control four or more creatures named Biovisionary, you win the game. Achievement unlocked. It's not impossible. Usually, you just have to make clones of this thing. Like, you can make a bunch of tokens of your Biovisionary. However, I mean, you're gonna tip off the table the moment you play this. I guess what you have to do is, like, you have to set up all your cloners. And then at the last moment, like, put the Biovisionary in play and, and then copy it as many times as you can before people... Like, if you just play Biovisionary on, like, turn three, they'll, like, that everyone will be like, Get them! Go get them! They got Biovisionary! Who knows, there could be four Biovisionaries by next turn. What is it, like, at the beginning? Oh, it's at the end step, too. Yeah, so you don't have to wait to the upkeep. They'll know. Okay, now uh, back to our regularly scheduled program. Let's take uh, one from Jess. Denik. The Pious Apprentice. Ooh, uh, two, two, three at two mana with lifelink. Cards in graveyards can't be the targets of spells or abilities. No, 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 graveyard players. Are you reanimators? You get out of here. Unless you play Exum. I believe Exum gets around this. It also has Disturb. Four mana. When it disturbs... Uh, whenever one or more creature cards are put into graveyards from anywhere, you investigate. This ability can only trigger e once each turn. And if Denik Pass would be put into a graveyard from anywhere, exile it instead. It's pretty good, uh, graveyard hate. Next super chat coming from Cunning Linguist, the Hunted Cheetah. Sorry, Hunting Cheetah. It's a cheetah. Okay, it's a th uh, three mana cat. Yeah, just a cat. Whenever hunting cheetah deals damage to an opponent, you may search your library for a forest card. Reveal that card, put it into your hand, then shuffle your library. This honestly is very underwhelming. Would not say this is particularly dangerous. This is very on rate, or maybe a slightly below rate for this uh, mana cost, but uh, sure. You super chatted, so do you know what? We're going to give it a thumbs up. You get those lands. Now, it does say a forest card, so it could, it could be a... A Dryad Arbor. It could be ya Can it be Yavamaya? No, you can't get Yav. You can't fetch Yavamaya. It could be Tropical Island. It could be anything. As long as it says forest on it. Okay, Christopher B. With the Mirkwood Bats. Mirkwood Bats is the four mana flyer. Whenever you create or sacrifice a token, each opponent loses one life. Uh, so, actually, quite a good finisher if you've got some sort of sacrifice engine going on. Especially if it's infinite, your opponents will just die to this thing. So, beware of the Mirkwood Bats. Beware of anything that triggers whenever cre uh, whenever you sacrifice... When you crater oh, it's only creator sacrifice a token. So, it cannot be creatures. It has to be a very specific engine. Very, very specific. Next up, we have Mill Master with um, Bilbo Birthday Achievement Unlocked. Bilbo... Birthday. It's your birthday, Bilbo. Congratulations. And then you disappeared on us and never showed up again. Okay, we have a three mana halfling rogue. If you would gain life, you gain that much life plus one instead. Uh, five mana tap. Exile Bilbo birthday celebrant. That's when he went disappear. He just put the ring on. Search your library for any number of creature cards. Put them onto the battlefield, then shuffle. Activate only if you have 111 more life. Is it more life? How old was Bilbo? I don't remember. Hold on, I'm just gonna look up. Uh, age of Bilbo Baggins. Can't remember if he was 101, or was he... He is 50 years old. Can't remember, he's 51. Oh no, he is 11 years old in Frodo's... Well, we're never... It's ask... It should be... When activate only if you have... Oh, it does say if you have 11... I thought it was more than 111 life. It's uh, exactly 111 or more life. They should have made it. You unlock it exactly at 111. Old guy. Must be working out. Inaria, Liliana, the heretic healer. Uh, heretic. There we go. Is that a new art? I don't remember that art. I want to go to the old. We're gonna to go to the origins. Magic origin. Origins. 
The three mana, two, three human cleric with lifelink. Whenever a non-token creature you control dies, exile Liliana Heretic Healer, then return her to the battlefield transformed under her owner's control. If you do, put a two-two black zombie creature token onto the battlefield. And that unlocks her origin story, Liliana Defiant Necromancer. From that day forth, she would be one with the zombies. Plus two, each player discards a card, minus X. Return target non-legendary creature card with converted mana cost X from your graveyard to the battlefield. And then minus eight, you, uh, minus eight, you get an emblem with whenever a creature dies, return it to the battlefield under your owner's control at the beginning of the next end step. Okay, next up, let's take a super chat from King Ginger. The Ableth Spawn. Super cool. Ableth Spawn. Spawning what? I'm not familiar with this card. It's a three mana fish horror. It's got flash. It has ward too, as well. All right, so far so good. I'm my ears are totally open here, and it it's probing telepathy. Whenever a creature entering the battlefield under an opponent's control causes a triggered ability to, of that creature to trigger, you may copy that ability. You may choose new targets for the copy. I like it. It's a little janky, but I like copying triggers and abilities. Uh, next up, let's take a look from Arcanus Ultra, the Will Breaker. This is a card, like, I'm waiting for someone to break this card. I love what it does. Now, it's a 5-mana human wizard, and whenever a creature an opponent controls becomes the target of a spell or ability, you control, you gain control of that creature for as long as you control Will Breaker. So, Will Breaker plus Agent of Treachery, it's like peanut butter and jelly! Except they, they both need something that targets stuff. So it's like, uh, sort of like Agent of Treachery, but with a few extra steps, but a little bit more achievable because it's already five mana. So it's a little bit cheaper to get on the battlefield. The problem is, I guess, targeting stuff. You could target something, I guess, with Deceiver Exarch and Pestermite. Like, those are innocent things to do it, but whatever. I like this card. Oh yeah, overloading something. I'm gonna overload this, give it all to me. Like raking in a big pot in poker, except it's you're raking in all your opponent's cards. Is uh whenever a creature it's only creatures though, unfortunately. Can't you use an equipment uh that pings the creatures? That's a lot of extra steps. Step one, get will breaker. Step two, get equipment. Step three, ping things like crazy. But that would work. That would work. Okay, Alan says, not dangerous, but Mila. I know a lot of these cards really aren't that dangerous. Mila, Crafty Companion. It's it, the card's cute. It's good boy. Okay, uh, we have a three mana fox. Whenever an opponent attacks one or more planeswalkers you control, put a loyalty counter on each planeswalker you can control. Get a little bit of defense up there. Whenever a permanent you control becomes the target of a spell or ability an opponent controls, oh, you get to draw a card. Sweet. Uh, I like that already. Okay, but now, but there's more. Oh, Luca! It's, you're the wolf. You were a wolf in sheep's clothing all along. Okay, uh, or is this the sheep's clothing? <laughs> okay, we have a six mana, five loyalty, Luca. Plus one, you may discard a card if you do draw a card. If you, uh, if a creature card was discarded this way, draw two cards instead. Minus two, return target creature card from your graveyard to the battlefield. It gains haste, exiled at the beginning of your next upkeep. And also, minus them, you get an emblem with whenever a creature enters the battlefield under your control, it deals damage equal to its power to any target. This is all free, by the way. You know, I, I wouldn't even, I don't even look at the Luca part. I'm, I'm totally fine with the wolfy part. Totally fine with that. All right, John. What, do you, what storyteller do you have for us? You got the Heartwood Storyteller. It's interesting, once you get to 2, 3, a lot of these cards get really fun. Well, fun for the person playing them, not for the person defending against them. It's a 3 mana tree folk. Whenever a player casts a non-creature spell, each of that player's opponents may draw a card. You wanna start storming up? You wanna, you wanna, this is like Rhystic Study for everybody, except for the, and you don't even have a choice. That you want to play a non-creature spell, you're going to pay by letting us all get rich off of it. Yes, keep playing more non-creature spells. More non-creature spells! Feels very group hug-like. They will regret. They will completely regret. Okay, next up, let's get, um... I don't think we've got for Cade yet. Helena. Helena e Alina. Partners. They are only friends. Alright, I believe you! I believe you. All right, four mana, two, three. First strike, reach. At the beginning of combat on your turn, put X 
plus one plus one counters on another target creature you control, where X is Helena and Alina's power. That creature gains haste until end of turn. It's human Ranger. Well, in first strike, reach at the beginning of combat on your turn, put X counters on another target creature you control, where it's equal to the power of the green creature. Oh, so effectively, the, 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 the value to this is that it whatever creature you play gives it haste. Give it a pep talk, you know. You can do it! Go destroy them for us all. Okay, next super chat coming from Star. Thank you very much for your super chat. Reflector Mage. One of the most unfun cards to ever play against. It's a three mana human wizard, and enters the battlefield, return target creature and opponent controls to its owner's hand. But here's the kicker. You have to remember that the, cr the creature's owner can't cast spells with the same name as that creature until your next turn. So you have to keep in mind, I'm not allowed to play this card anymore. And it's really frustrating. And what if you have mul- I've been in so many situations where I have like three of one card. I play it. They bounce it back to my hand. I can't play any of the three cards that I have in my hand because they all have the same damn name. It was really, really very frustrating card to play against. It was very, very strong. It was great in standard. It was great in modern, actually. It was great in modern humans. Um, it would probably be still great today if it had a home. But uh, it's still very good, I'm sure, in commander. It's a lot of competitive play over the years. And with that music, we're going to thank our sponsors, FusionGamingOnline.com. You're looking out for the Fallout Universes Beyond Commander Deck series. You can buy them at FusionGamingOnline.com. But if Commander Decks are not for you, you could also get singles. The deal of the week this week is getting 15% off all the Karlov Man Manor singles. Surveil lands are here to stay. Things like Hedge Maze and the rest of them are very, very competitive. It's made fetch land stronger. You fetch, you enter the battlefield, you get to look at the top card of your library. If it's good, keep it on top. If it's bad, keep it on the bottom. Now's the time to get your collection at FusionGamingOnline.com. Um, but don't forget to use coupon code Nikachu uh, at checkout to get five an additional 5% off all your purchases. We're also going to thank Mana Traders, the premier place for renting magic cards online. Your, your routes to playing any format you want at any time that you want. And playing any deck in those formats as well. Why would you want to rent cards on Magic Online? Well, it's cheaper if you like to play with a lot of decks. And if the deck is tier 0, you want to be able to play it immediately. And if it, the world has adjusted to it, you can just rent the next best deck. That's how it gives you that competitive edge. And you can support the channel using my Mana Traders link in the description below. Save 10% off your first two months using coupon code Nikachu underscore Z-U-E. I think that uh, coupon code still works right now. All right. Let's take a look at more of these cards. Um, who hasn't got a card yet? I don't think David got a card. We got Sasaya. Sasaya? Orochi Ascendant? Sasaya? This is... It is a 2-3 creature. Reveal your hand. If you have seven or more land cards in your hand, flip Sasaya. Ooh, I like the old flip cards. Beep-whoop. Uh, into Sasea's Essence. Whenever a land you control is tapped for mana, add one mana of that type to your mana pool for each other land you control with the same name. Oh. Okay, so, like, if I have a million forests and I tap a land, it adds, like, so if I have seven forests, it will, each, each forest taps for seven mana? That's broken. A little bit of work to work this thing out. How do we flip it? If you have seven or more land cards in your hand... Oh, that's awful, though. Oh, no. How do I get seven or more land cards in my hand? Man, do we really need the mana that badly? Look, look at all these lands in my hand. I'm not afraid. I mean, you know what? Actually, do I take it back? What if it's like a lands deck? Yeah, it's a, well, unless you're a lands deck. You know, you just play with, like, Tabernacle... Yeah, and you can play green. You can play green lands, green mono lands. So you got like Tabernacle and Maze of Ith and uh, Dark Depths, Thespian Stage, uh, Glacial Chasm, and more. You can make it work. You can make it work. Yeah, just keep loaming. You got, you got, it's going to happen. The problem is that making this, you probably have a better deck if you have a different commander. Having this mono green commander, probably not oh, completely ideal, but it's possible. <laughs> 99 lands. Exactly. You got a cunning linguist. You build it, they will come. It will work. The problem is if you want to make a dedi super hardcore dedicated lands deck, probably some of those lands are very expensive. Tabernacle ain't cheap. That's why, uh, that's why you invest in a printer. 
People that know, know. Okay, next up, Cunning Linguist. You're up. Miri, Cat Warrior. Forced Walk Danger. Miri! Uh, we have a three mana Cat Warrior with First Strike, Forest Walk, and Vigilance. That's it? I don't know about this card. That's it! <laughs> I mean, it will it will play very well versus this Sasaya Orochi Ascendant deck, so it's already kept in check by the Miri Cat Warrior. Okay, what, what, what else do we not have yet? Uh, Von Ragnar. Lands decks have a lot of lands with different names. It kind of renders to say useless anyway. Well, no, but the, the point is you ha still have it with a lot of forests. I will admit, this card is a little awkward in a commander deck. So it's the only land, the only card you're allowed to have multiples of are a basic land. But you can still make it work. Again, life from the loam. Life from the loam, people. Life from the loam. It will work. Um... Okay, who do we, who's never had a card yet? I think a lot of people have. We have Ulik, Hostage Taker. An excellent card. Uh, this is a four mana human pirate. I, uh, it's about to say, I, I, Captain. Our mateys. When Hostage Taker enters the battlefield, exile another target creature or artifact until Hostage Taker leaves the battlefield. You may cast that card for as long as it remains exiled. And mana of any type can be spent to cast that card. So it's like, it's like sort of like Agent of Treachery, like Baby Agent of Treachery. You exile someone's thing away. So at the very least, it's gone. So it's one mana, it's like a, basically a one mana removal spell. But then you get to cast the card yourself. And once you cast the card, they can't get it back. So it says exile another target creature or artifact until hostage taker leaves the battlefield. But then if you cast the card from exile and then hostage taker dies, well, your card's just gone. Sorry. You don't get it back around here. Stole your girl. Okay, Cunning Linguist. What do you got for us here? Uh, Savalas Heart of the Wilds. Uh, what is this one? Savala. Heart of the Wilds. Did we look at this one? Whenever another creature... Yeah, we did this one. Sorry about that. You got sort of sniped. Got sniped. So we're going to donate. Donate it to Dingle... I thought you got one already, Dingle Bag. The Marrow Gnar. Oh, the problem is we did this one already. Okay, we already did this one. Bryce! Herald of Secret Steams! Herald... Herald of... I actually basically died to this card uh, when I went to SCG Con. I was playing Commander. Playing Commander with my top uh, my top moderator, Lord Magicus. And Lord Magicus had a uh, Simic Merfolk deck that put a lot of Explore counters on his creatures, and then he made them enormous with uh, Herald of Secret Streams. Or made them devastating, I should say, because they all had Unblockable. So I had to deal with this world of secret streams. There was, I had to be, we had to deal with that. Anyone could die at any moment. Next up, Pacers Fan Forever with uh, Kid, Kidley. Kidley, this sounds like some sort of villain from uh, Kirby or something. Like Waddle D, the chosen of Proofix. Now this is a four mana human wizard. Tap to add colorless to your mana pool for each card you've drawn this turn. Is this an Eldrazi in disguise? Literally gives me Eldrazi vibes. Why are you adding so much colorless, Crewfix? Whose side are you on around here? It's got partner. If you have two commanders, if both have partner. So we're adding colorless to your mana pool for each card you've drawn this turn. That could be broken. Like, what do you want most when you draw like a million cards? You want mana. And this thing just produces the mana that you want. Draw five. You could even have like those cards that are like Windfall. You know, discard your hand, draw seven. And you got like seven colorless mana from this. Unbelievable. Uh, next. Zarthor, did you just arrive? How's the Merfolk Mirror in EDH? Um, I don't know. <laughs> if there's like four of them, I don't have enough experience. Uh, I know we did the card, but if I wait long enough, Pikachu will forget we've done it. Oh, yeah, I get it. Okay, next up. Let's take a look at Metallic Dr uh, Dranzers, Old Man of the Sea. 
This thing's like in retirement, almost. It's a three mana uh, genie. Whenever you may choose not to untap old man of the sea during your untap step, tap gain control of target creature with power less than or equal to old man of the sea's power as long as old man of the sea remains tapped and that creature's power remains less than or equal to old man of the sea's power. So you just swi swipe their tiny creatures away. It was like the old fashioned version of Threads of Disloyalty. Tetra Timboman, Faceless Butcher. That's an old card. Uh, new cards have exile target until this leaves, with, but with Butcher, the old text, you can ephemerate to have return trigger happen before the exile, and then they never come back. Oops. Face, Faceless Butcher. Yeah, all the old cards ha broke up the exile and return in two separate paragraphs, which allowed you to do that. So in this case, when Faceless Butcher enters the battlefield, exile target creature. Now, while that's on the stack, while the creature is still ab about to get exiled, you could sacrifice your Faceless Butcher or Blanket or something, return it back to your hand, uh, then the Leaves Battlefield trigger would happen, that would resolve first, and then the Exile trigger would happen last, and then it's just gone! Say goodbye, say sayonara to your creature. Do you know what? The Faceless Butcher didn't see anything. It's completely faith faceless. Uh, next up, we've got Bacon Kappa came late. Erg Raiders. 2 3 for an extremely efficient back in Arabian Nights. Oh, back in the day, huh? Back in my day. Okay, well, let's get the old. Let's look at the ancient text. I can barely see the colorless mana symbol. It's completely blended in with the card image. It's like we don't want to make this two mana, we just want to make it one mana. All right, uh, if you do not attack with raiders, they deal two, they do two damage to you at end of turn. Raiders do not damage to you. What? Oh, sorry. Raiders do no damage to you during the turn in which they are summoned. Okay, so basically, turn I cast it, it will do nothing. But if it can attack and it doesn't, it deals two damage to me. Is that how it works? At the beginning of your end step, if Erg Raiders didn't attack this turn, it deals two damage to you unless it came under your control this turn. All right. More cleanly worded now. Uh, not particularly dangerous. It's two mana, two, three. That's it. But I know you just wanted to get on the show. That's fine, too. Okay, Pacers fan forever with... Uh, oh, Raiden from Mortal Kombat. This makes me wonder. Maybe I should get some Mortal Kombat sound effects on here. God of the Worthy. Now, uh, so this is this was the anti-snow card, right? I think this is an anti-snow card. Uh, it's a two-three god with vigilance and flying. Snow lands your opponent's control. Enter the battlefield tapped, and non-creature spells your opponent's cast with convert mana cost four or greater. They're gonna cost two, even two more to cast. The the, the rich get more expensive. Uh, alternatively, you can play Valkmira Protector's Shield for four mana. If a source an opponent controls would deal damage to you or a permit you control, prevent one of that damage. And whenever you or another permit you control becomes the target of a spell or ability an opponent controls, counter that spell or ability unless they pay one. So it's a, it's a taxer. It'd be taxing around here. Yeah, snow, la <laughs> snow lands, your opponent's control, enter the battlefield tap. That was not the snow hate we were waiting for. You should do more do Mortal Kombat sound effects. Or maybe Mortal Kombat Super Chats. Okay, maybe I could look into that. Totally forgot about that game. Uh, Toilet Duck, Yuan Shao. Yuan Shao, the indecisive. Uh, fun thing to do, use this with anything that has menace. It's got horsemanship, and each of your creatures can't be blocked by more than one creature each turn as long as Yuan Shao is in play. Ah! I've got menace, which means you need two creatures to block my one. Except you can't, because all of my creatures cannot be blocked by more than one. So it makes my menacing creature unblockable. Interesting combo. Uh, next super chat, we've got Yeesus. I'm just gonna get to this big super chat. Uh, first time viewer, long time super chatter. Huh? So you've been super chatting this entire time, but this is the first time you're viewing the show? I think I think you mean long time viewer, first time super chatter? Never had a card before? I say welcoming vampire.
was the bread and butter of a lot of my white decks. Also, a very good synergistic card for the vampire decks. So it is a flyer, and whenever one or more other creatures with power two or less enter the battlefield under your control, you do draw a card. Keep those card draw coming. This ability triggers only once each turn, but if you can violent vampires uh, on your opponent's on your opponent's turn, or I give them the ability to have flash, now we're talking. Then you get draw cards every single turn. Islarf, uh, Colonel Autumn. Can someone explain to me how Colonel is <laughs> is spelled like this? Or am I pronouncing it wrong my entire life? Colonel. I really don't get it. Sometimes English doesn't make sense to me. So we have a th uh, three mana human soldier with lifelink and exploit. Well, that's an old mechanic. The creature enters the battlefield, you can sack a creature. Other legendary creatures you control have exploit. And whenever a creature you control exploits a creature, put a plus one plus one counter on each creature you control. Jeebus. I don't know, like that doesn't sound like it has synergy. Because you like sack a creature to buff up all your creatures, but then you're constantly sacking the creatures. That's weird. Weird synergy in my opinion. Next up we have Dark Star Assures Mav uh, Mavinda. A Mavinda something. Students Advocate. It's a big bird. And it's an advisor. Because you know what? That's the stereotype. Owls are wise. They have wisdom. So it's a three mana bird advisor with flying. Zero, you may cast target instant or sorcery card from your graveyard this turn. If that spell doesn't target a creature you control, it costs eight more to cast this way. Oh god. And if uh if that spell would be put into a graveyard, exile it instead. Activate only once each turn. You may cast target instant or sorcery spell from a graveyard? If it doesn't target a creature you control. So basically, that's the eight is such a weird number. How do they come up with eight? It's like, okay, if you're going to target a removal spell on your opponent's stuff, well, you're going to have to pay. You're going to pay like nine mana to cast Lightning Bolt. Oh, no, no. I guess it's just eight mana. Oh, no, you can cast right. No, it doesn't. Yeah, you still have to pay the mana for the thing. <laughs> Owlin, what the Avon of Arcavius are called. Oh, yeah, the Owlin. All right, moving on. Uh, let's take one from... Ooh, this one's going to surefire selves, MTG, with the uh, Campbell. Campbell, Console of Allocation. The Orzov Stop Taxing Me card. It's a three mana uh, human advisor, and whenever an opponent casts a non-creature spell, that player loses two... They lose two life! But then you gain two life. He has friends at places both high and low, and all seem to owe him favors. That sucks. Some wise word. Don't let money get in the way of friends. Of, don't, yeah, has friends. Don't let money get in the way of friendship. Okay, uh, Kagan with a super chat. Just throwing an oldie out there. The Wall of Brambles. It is old. That's what was <laughs> Regenerate. That's how old it is. Needs regeneration every single day. It's got to use those protein shakes to get... And also, you know, regenerate is also... You got to need that afternoon nap. You need that evening nap. A lot of napping happens at that uh, at that age. Okay, next up. Uh, for Genki... For, sorry, for Genka has my girl. We got to see that beauty. Where's for Genka? I didn't get one today. Ayara. First of Lothwain. All right, is a triple black, easy to cast off of your dark ritual. Uh, Lothwain, whenever a Yara or another black creature enters the battlefield under your control, each opponent loses one life and you gain one life. Or another black, so any creature you play buffs you up uh, and everyone loses life. If you make a bunch of black tokens, I mean, that's just game over. Tap, sacrifice another black creature, draw a card. Make the, if you start making to so this is really good in a zombie deck except this elf is not a zombie this elf turned to the dark side I understand some elves uh, you know they like to they they mix it up with Golgari this one went completely evil okay next up let's take a look here she danger <laughs> I can see this card totally dangering Start multiplying all your cards all over the place. Cunning Linguist uh, with Marlin of the Mourn Song. Ah, excellent choice. All 
Okay, Marlin of the Morn Song is a three mana two three elf wizard. Players can't draw cards at the beginning of each player's draw step. That player loses three life. Searches uh, their library for a card, puts it into their hand, then shuffles their library. But what if you have this plus Notion Thief? Then you be completely screwed. Or what is it else? Uh, Teferi Puzzles Box. Is it Teferi Puzzle Box? There's like a lot of combos with Marilyn of the Morn Song that just makes you miserable. It's like Marilyn of the Morn Song. Oh God. You're not gonna do anything fair with this card now, are you? Wow, no reprints. This is the only version that exists. We never knew the real Marilyn. This is a construct Una created that went rogue. Ah. A clone is what you're telling me. Yeah, she definitely mega dangerous. <laughs> Marilyn, it danger! Well, not by herself, though. She needs a little bit of assistance. Pacers, fan forever. The Prophet of Crufix. Okay, who, uh, who out there thinks this should be unbanned? I have no opinion on this. I really don't care about this card. It's five mana. It's two, three. Now you untap all creatures and lands you control during each other player's untap step, and you may cast creature cards as though they had flash. So effectively, you get like four times the mana because you get the same amount of mana uh, on every single one of your other opponent's turns, and you may cast your cards. <laughs> So all you need to do is like have cards in your hand that can like draw you cards on your opponent's turn and it's like basically like you have four turns. It's effectively a top four four way time walk. And it's Simic. Can't remember there's a card that's similar to this that people argue for like saying uh but I guess it's not as busted. This is like a green version of this that does like half of what these things do. If you want to play solitaire with four people then yes. Yeah, they have, uh, there's the green one. They have the green creature that does it. Why ban her? I think this one says you can cast the creature cards with for flash. So that's the big difference. Slows the game down in EDH. You know, I think that's such a good argument. I think, like, the mana rocks, for example, in EDH <laughs> sucks a lot of the skill out of the game. Because it just makes everything absurdly high power level. But at the same time, if you got rid of all the mana artifacts, the games would take forever. And I totally understand that some people, they just, just want another game. All right, you want on turn three? Oh, let's get another one. And let's get another one. So everyone gets a turn three win at some point in tonight. Or something to that effect. The green one is Seaborn Muse. Aha. Uh -huh. Is it two, three? Seaborn Muse. It is 2 4. Disqualified for this show. Not that you're going for it. Untap all permanents you control during each other. Yeah, so it's it's very similar, but you can't cast the creature spells, which makes it a lot weaker. A lot weaker. Okay, next up. Uh, let's take a look at. It's Videlkin Ori st stuck to a Windborn Muse. Oh, great. Great observation, Sansi. I like it. Perfect observation. Though, see, it's two cards combined into one. Hence why it's banned. Okay, next, let's take a look at... Christopher B's Daring Thief. Does this even do anything? Oh, this is not what I was thinking of. It's three mana human rogue with inspired. Which means it untap Whenever it untaps, it has an ability. When Daring Thief becomes untapped, you may exchange control of target non-land permanent you control. And target permanent and opponent controls that shares a card type. Very good to know. Credit to Hanaria, General's Enforcer. Oh, okay. Enforcer. Oh, credit to Hanaria. Where's Hanaria? There we go. Hanaria's card, General's Enforcer. Black, white, uh, human soldier. Legendary humans you control have indestructible. Try to destroy my creature. In response, I'll violin my General's Enforcer or Coco it into play. Now, for four mana, exile target card from a graveyard, and if it was a creature card, you get a 1-1 one, one white human cre soldier creature token. You can be a... So I, I can just imagine, like, going to a dead zombie in the graveyard. It's like, you are a soldier now. You can be a soldier. You can carry this weapon. Kagan! Uh, how about Zillix? The Sanity, sanity Flayer. Sanity gone. Okay, this is a three mana horror with hive mind. Whenever a player mills one or more creature cards, you create a one one black horror creature token. Pay one tap, a target player mills three cards, and you also choose a background. You can have a background as a second commander. 
it just mills things. Remember, player mills one or more cards. So you mill. So you're trying to make mill good. Is what you're telling me. The mono blue mill deck. Uh, next up, let's take a look at um, Arrows Lazav, Wearer of Faces. Lazav. The Wearer of Faces. It's a two mana whenever it it's a shapeshifter detective. Whenever Lazav attacks, exile target card from a graveyard, then investigate. Whenever you sacrifice a clue, you may have Lazav become a copy of a creature. Card exiled with it until end of turn. So it can be it can turn into anything around here. That's the gist of this card. King Makar! Do people like this card? Creates things that turns everything into gold. Okay, the four mana two three human. Uh, with Inspired. Whenever King Makar, the gold curse becomes untapped, you may exile target creature. If you do, put a colorless artifact token named gold onto the battlefield. It has sacrificed this artifact. Add one man of any color to your mana pool. I always thought that, like, the flavor was weird. It's like when you untap it, it turns something into gold. I always figured, like, if it, if it blocks or becomes blocked, it turns that thing into gold. That makes a whole lot more sense to me. In my opinion... We got the Sand Wedge with Kale Makar. Is that a real name? Oh, you're, oh, you're talking about this thing, the Kale Makar. Okay. David Sampson. Uh, Aboleth Spawn. Oh, we did that one already. How about we go with Someone to Foresee's Herloon Shaman? What is this? from Weatherlight, the three mana Minotaur. If it's put into a graveyard from play, each player chooses and buries a land they control. Ah, they're taking the land down with them. So weird. Uh, next up. Oh, it's a super chat. Again with Kagan. Uh, always wanted to pull this off. Hanweir uh, Han Han Garrison. Hope I pronounced that properly. What do you mean, like, getting the second part off? Um... I want to say they're... I want to say the Titan deck once tried to do this, but maybe I'm wrong. Okay, it's a three-mana uh, human soldier. When it attacks, put two 1-1 one, one red human creature tokens onto the battlefield, tapped and attacking. Or maybe it was a Pioneer humans deck? I can't remember. Some deck tried this. And, like, I have once died to this thing. But it's so rare because no one wants to really try for this combo. Cause it's not really, it's not really worth pulling off. If you know what I mean? Um, no, this was never played in Titan. The lands were played in Titan. There was like a dual land playing in played in Titan, but not this thing. Okay, next up we got Bryce with the Prophet of Crew Fix. I apologize, Bryce, but you got sniped from a million years ago. Sorry about that. Do you have another one, Bryce? I'm gonna look. Bryce is probably still around here. Maybe Bryce left. I don't know. Bryce is gone. Bryce! Okay, anyway, we'll uh, donate the super chat to Mad Cat. Uh, Rubin Rubinia Soul Singer. Oh! This is a pretty looking card. This art looks AI generated to me for some reason. It's like, it's too fantasy looking. Which could be a compliment if uh, for the artist. Okay, it's so uh, it is a five mana fairy. You may choose not to untap Rubinia, Soul Singer, during your untap step. Tap gain control of target creature for as long as you control Rubinia, and Rubinia remains tapped. So it's like Old Man of the Sea, but we can steal anything, no how matter how no matter how big or too small. Is Abzo trying hard here? Wait, what is Abzo doing? Did it, Christopher B? Hold on, where's Abzo? Okay. Uh, Leela, Artful Provocator. Provoking is... Uh, th this fairy is provoking, are they? Okay, it's a four mana fairy warlock. Flying, death touch, lifelink. Other creatures you control with flying get plus one, plus zero. That's exactly what the fairy players needed. Whenever you cast an artifact or enchantment spell, create a 1-1 one, one blue fairy creature token with flying. Ah, damn it. You need that, like, artifact or, like, artifact and creature enchantment synergy around here. 
Oh well. Alea, Alea, Alea. Is this like a song or something? Alea, Aleo. Okay, pays his fan forever with the Windborn Muse. Did I spell this wrong? This card, it's four mana flying spirit. Creatures can't attack you unless their controller pays two. For each creature they control that's attacking you. Oh, it's the ghostly prison. Ghostly prison on a fairy. Sorry, not, it looks like a fairy, it's a spirit. It's in between spirit and fairy. It's a dead fairy as far as I'm concerned. This is great! You know, whenever someone has the choice, attack this person for free, attack this person for two mana, they never want to attack you for two mana. There is a single deterrent, it will protect you completely from everybody. Uh, next stop, let's take one from David Sampson. Oh, hold on, uh, we did Archon of Ameria? Yeah, we did the Archon of Ameria. Okay, Kite Sail. Uh, Larcenist. A lot of card sale cards. We're gonna commit larceny around here. It is a human plot pirate for three mana with flying in Ward 1. Enters the battlefield for each player. Choose up to one other target artifact or creature that player controls. For as long as Kite Sail Larcenist remains on the battlefield, the chosen permits become treasure artifacts. With tap, sacrifice this artifact, add one mana of any color, and lose all other abilities. Next up, we've got the Rest in Serpentine's Blizzard Spectre. Blizzard Spectre or Inspector? Where is this? Oh, here it is. The Blizzard Spectre. Uh, it's a four mana Spectre with flying, and it deals combat damage to a player. Choose one. That player returns a permanent they control to its owner's hand, or that player discards a card. Not really a fan of this whole discarding a card thing, but returning a permanent back to their hand? But every turn? I like the sound of that. Um, we did Agent of Treachery. Let's uh, let's get a, another Christopher B special on the Null Mage Advocate. What is this? A three it's a random what are you are you throwing out like random commons? Insect Druid. Tap, return two target cards from an opponent's graveyard to their hand. Destroy it's not even your cards. Destroy target artifact or enchantment. I guess it's a good group hug card. So it's like if you need to make allies, all right, you can return these two cards back to your hand. And I'll blow up this person's Ristic Study or a Ghostly Prison or something. Maybe that works out. It's interesting. It's got potential. I wouldn't say it's the most hardcore car card out there, though. Rest in Serpentine. Thank you very much for your super chat. Uh, Sirku. Sir, Sirku. Demir Lobotomist. All right, Sirku, uh, four mana human wizard. Whenever you play a blue spell, remove the top card of your library from the game. Whenever you play a black spell, remove the top card of top card. Remove the top card of target library from the game. Well, what's the difference between this? If you play a blue spell, remove the top card of target library from the game. Whenever you play a black spell, remove the top card of target. It's the same thing. They could have just said if whenever you play a blue or black spell. Okay, when uh, your opponents can't play non-land cards with the same name as a card removed from the game with Circu Demir Lobotomy. Is that not just stone cold useless? Like, isn't that just useless in Commander? The difference is that if you play a Demir spell, you get two triggers. Ah, oh, I see. So is the point, or is it just a milling card? Yeah, so if you play a blue and black spell, thank you for educating me, folks. I never would have thought it worked like that. Um, or there might, maybe there's a combo to this that I don't know, that I don't understand. Your opponents can't play non-land cards with the same name as a card removed from the game with Sirku. Everyone's coming in to tell me. So everyone knows how this card works. However, I don't know why this card would see any play. I really have no, no clue. This, like, this is beyond my comprehension. No one would want to play this card. You're not going to have multiples of anything in Commander. This card doesn't see play outside of that, that's for sure. That has a test of talent effect. Okay. Anyway, Sir, if anyone can tell me where this card sees play in the world and for what reason, you gotta let me know in the comment section below. Turkey, we did Bilbo. All right, it's time for Super Chats R Us. It's the Super Chat segment of the show. 
Yeeson! Blunder Bard. You like your creature combos? Well, get a load of Yeeson. The three mana legendary human rogue bard. Three mana tap, put a verse counter on Yeeson the Wanderer Bard. Uh, search your library for a creature card with mana value equal to or uh, to the number of verse counters on Yeeson. Put onto the battlefield, then shuffle. So what you can do is uh, <laughs> there are combos with this to keep untapping the Yeeson. I don't know if there's actually a clear combo with Yeeson. Where you put a counter on it, you look at your library for a card. I think there is. I think there's like a one-shot kill, but I'm I might not, I might be wrong. Maybe it only works with like um birthing pod but i'm pretty sure if you have enough colors in your deck you can't be mono green but if you have enough colors in your deck this might be a like a one shot kill the moment you get to tap and activate this thing and you have enough mana you do need enough mana at the same time okay screw it i don't think there's any way there's just it's just like a tutoring thing i can't think of one i can't think of any reasonable way of comboing with this on the immediate turn because of the three mana thing Three mana balances it out, Yisan. Balances you out. Cunning Linguist! Five donations for the coffee crew. Five donations it is. All right. So our first is going to be... Skirtier uh, Izoni. Thousand-Eyed. This is a six mana elf shaman with undergrowth. When a zone a thousand eyed enters the battlefield, create a one one black and green insect creature token for each creature card in your graveyard. Also pay two mana, sacrifice another creature to gain one life, of course. Uh, and draw a card. I like that. I like turning trash into treasure. It's always a good feeling. Next super chat's gonna go to um, Star. We've got uh, Use U Usri Fortune's Flame. This is a three mana flying Ifrit, which means it's a. I think it's a bad genie. That's what it is. I think it's a. It means it's a bad genie. Whenever it attacks, choose a number between one and five. Why five? Flip that many. Oh, you gotta flip that many coins. For each flip, you win. Draw a card, and then for each flip you lose, uh, use three deals two damage to you. If you won five flips this way, you may cast spells from your hand this turn without paying their mana costs. What are the odds of that? You have to win if you win five flips. Okay, choose a number between and five. Flip that many coins. So you have to choose five. Okay, getting Nikachu's calculator out the odds. So, um, what was it? One divided by two equals 50%. Divided by two equals divided by two equals divided by two. Or hold on, hold on. It's like point, it's point five times 0.5 times 0.5 times 0.5 times 0.5 I think that's it so the odds of winning 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 five coin flips is 3.125 percent I think Nikachu's calculator is right if Nikachu has done for the probability one in 32 was I right yeah oh hell math the numbers I see numbers <laughs> Less than 6%, I think. I like that. I like that math, too. I want it in percentages. I don't want it. I don't want these fractions. That's too easy. I think I did it right, though. 1 in 32. Yeah, times 3. That sounds about like, close to 100%. Um, good luck. That's all I'll say with you, Sri. Good luck. All right. Let's get our second super chat of the five. Uh... We did profit a crew fix. I told you, Jess. Okay, we've got uh, Dev uh, Deveri. Sorry, Derevi. Oh yeah, what happened to this card? I thought this card was broken. Everyone's like Derevi this, Derevi that, I'm trying to keep Derevi in check. So three mana uh, bird wizard with flying enters the battlefield, uh, or a creature you control deals combat damage to a player. You may tap or untap target permanent. You also pay for put Derevi. Derevi onto the battlefield from the command zone. So no taxing around here. Taxman stay away from Derevi. Cheating on taxes. Derevi. Uh, tax evasion. Tactician. Uh, okay, next up. Let's look at Mario. So uh, that was two super chats. Uh, Ray Dane. Oh, we did Ray Dane. So we'll go to Arcanus. Codsworth. Handy helper. Love Fallout. This is a weird robot. 
Three mana. Commanders you control have ward two. All your commanders. Up to all two of them. Tap. Add white white. Uh, spend this mana only to cast aura and equipment spells. Also tap. Attach target aura equipment you control to target creature you control. Activate only as a sorcery. Proud to serve. Good for them. We have a third. Uh, let's look at Termus's quality. Poet of Unity. There it is. There's Walty. It's a three mana human warrior bard. Uh, Poet of Unity enters the battlefield. Search your library for a basic land card. Reveal it and point your hand. Also, for five mana, exile Walty, then return it to the battlefield. Transformed uh, as Roar of the Fifth People. So for chapter one, it's a saga now. Chapter one, create two, three, three green dinosaur creature tokens. Also, Roar of the Fifth People gains creatures you control have tap, add red, green, or white for chapter two. Chapter three, search your library for a dinosaur card, reveal it, put it in your hand, then shuffle in. Also, chapter four, dinosaurs you control gain double strike and, tra and trample until end of turn. Quality, one with the dinosaurs. Jaw Jaw with Aerial Responder. I think this is the fourth super chat. The fourth freebie. This is a three mana dwarf soldier with flying vigilance and lifelink. This is terrible. Okay, next up we'll go with uh, Kano with Blade Historian. This is a four mana human cleric attacking creatures you control have double strike. They're stronger than you think. Oh, here's King Ginger. The next super super chat was King Codsworth Handy Helper. One was that that's the one we just looked at, right? Codsworth. Oh yeah, sorry about that, King Ginger. So we're gonna donate it. Donate it to who's gonna get it? I was trying really hard to get Gaunty on here. The Lord of Luxury for four mana and Aetherborn Rogue with Death Touch. Enters the battlefield, look at the top four cards of target opponent's library, exile one of them face down, and then put the rest on the bottom of the library in a random order. You may cast that card for as long as it remains exiled. Uh, and mana, oh yeah, oh yeah, mana of any type can be spent to cast it. It's card advantage, people. How does this work? Hold on, so it's just ETB, steal a card every single time. Look at the top four cards of Target's opponent's library. Exile one of them and you may play it. Okay, next up, we've got King Ginger's... Oh, Feline Sovereign. We got a kitty. It is a 2-3 creature for three mana, and it's a cat. Other cats you control get plus one, plus one, and have protection from dogs. Whenever one or more cats you control deal combat damage to a player, destroy up to one target artifact or enchantment that player controls. Actually, that part is broken. So, like, as you attack with a bunch of cats, you, like, blow up all your opponent's artifacts and enchantments. Things go f fall apart really quickly. Dark Star Shura with the Grand Arbiter. Sorry about that. We did that one already, Dark Star Shura. I wouldn't even say you got sniped. I think you were around at that time. So, we'll do, um... We'll do one of King Ginger. King Ginger also got sniped, so we'll do Brea's Apprentice. Oh, the three mana human artificer enters the battlefield. You create a 1 1 Thopter with flying. You also have the abilities tap, sack an artifact, choose one, exile the top card of your library until the end of your next turn. You may play that card, or target creature gets plus two, plus zero until end of turn. Read the flavor. What on this last one? Dogs beg, cats lay claim. I don't really get it. Okay, next up. We've got... Oh, Kagan again. Kagan loves the 2-3 creatures, apparently. I want to do an arch, uh, an arc anime EDH game with my friends using the Friends Forever cards for 2-3s. That's Hargild Kindly Rune Chatter. What is this? Hargild... Our guild? Kindly Rune Chatter, a four mana human. Tap to add double colorless. It is Soul Ring. Spend this mana only to cast artifact spells or activated abilities of artifacts. And has friends forever. You can have two commanders if both have friends forever. Isn't that just another partner? I guess you can never have enough partner mechanics. 
Okay, cunning linguist. Uh, Kesa. Is that it? We're gonna find Kesa. This is Kesa. For four ma- sorry, for five mana. Green creatures I control get plus one, plus one. Oh, I guess anthems are expensive in green. Just for the name, professional face, <laughs> professional face breaker. Thank you very much, Kagan. All right, professional face breaker. Uh, for three mana, human warrior with menace. Whenever one or more creatures you control deal combat damage to a player, create a treasure token. Sacrifice a treasure. Exile the top card of your library. You may play that card. Uh, you may play that card this turn. Ooh, Paragon Drake. Play for with this card. Not the most busted of busted cards, but uh, nonetheless, for five mana, it's uh, isn't it banned in Popper? Pretty sure this is banned in Popper. Isn't that wild? It's a flying creature when it enters the battlefield, untap up to five lands. Now the idea is like, okay, in Popper it's just free to play, but also depending if how much mana your your lands are producing, this card will just stack a ton of mana on the on the battlefields because you like I don't know tap five lands to add 10 mana and then you play Peregrine Drake to untap it all and you got like an extra free mana out of the deal. So it's pretty pretty strong for that reason. Cunning Linguist uh, with per Paraj of Urborg for cat deck. It's probably Parai. Uh, for cat deck? It is a cat warrior. It has been eradicated to cat warrior. It is a five mana first strike only when attacking. Pay a black, put a plus one, plus one counter on Pry of Urborg. Uh, use this ability only when a black spell is successfully cast. Only once for each such spell. Success. Okay, what the hell does this card say? Okay, it's first strong as long as it's first strike as long as it's attacking. If a player casts a black spell, you can't pay a black. If you do, put a plus one, plus one counter on Pry of Urborg. Good for that. Stats end. We already did uh, Archon of Emeria. It was very early, actually. So we'll donate the super chat to mm, Turkey. I don't think Turkey got a card. Turkey named a lot of cards that came out short. Doctor Madison Lee. I really am a doctor. Okay, it's a three mana human scientist. Whenever you cast an artifact spell, you get an energy. So, okay, so this could break energy. Artifacts are easy to cast and also easy to, like, chain off of each other. Tap, pay an energy. Uh, target creature gets plus one, plus zero, and gains trample and haste until end of turn. Tap, pay triple energy to draw a card. Tap, pay five energy. Return target artifact card from your graveyard to the battlefield tapped. Oh my goodness. That's dangerous. That card is good. Kagan okay, says the show's not done yet because we've got last one. The Druid of Purification. Druid of Purification. A three mana human druid enters the battlefield starting with you. Each player may choose an artifact or enchantment you don't control. Hold on. Starting with you, each player. Oh, so an artifact or enchantment they don't control. Destroy each permit chosen this way. Huh? So enters the battlefield, starting with you, each player chooses... Oh, I see, so I point at your soul ring, you point at my... Hold oh, on, we're not done yet. We're almost done, though. Uh, so I point at your soul ring, you point at my ghostly prison, and then what? Is that how this works? And everyone... And then we destroy each permanent chosen this way. Return to the earth and the wind. Cunning Linguist with the Realm Walker. I <laughs> had this card. Uh, three mana shapeshifter with changeling. This goes for all creature types. Be whatever you want. Yeah, throw. <laughs> every deck is like, yeah, I'll play Realm Walker. Okay, you may look at the top card of your library at any time. And you may cast creature spells of the chosen type from the top of your library. So when it enters the battlefield, you can choose goblin, merfolk, elves, human, spirits. It's all up to you. And with that the end of the show thank you so much everyone for showing up today hope you enjoyed the a bunch of really good strong 
two, three creatures. And if you want to be part of the show, you got to be here 11 o'clock a.m. Central Standard Time on weekdays. Thanks, everyone, who supports the channel. If you're a patron on Patreon, a member on YouTube, or you support the channel through your Super Chats and also helping to support other people through Super Chats so they get their cards on the show. And most importantly, we got to thank the copy crew for showing up this morning. People like King Ginger. Oh, where is King Ginger? This is where people start spamming their, their presents. Toilet Doc Termas, King Ginger, Amazing Crack Monkey, Christopher B, Toad, Sa David Sampson, Jess, Turkey, uh, Arcanus Ultra, Ferginka, Erland, Arrow, Proto, Proto Pawn, Termas, Con, Cono, Toads, Fricade, Dinglebag, Steve Cooper, Kagan, Cunning Linguist, Mario, Christopher B, because you guys are the coffee crew. So as usual, my crew, Keep brewing up them coffees, and we'll keep brewing up the magic. Take care of yourselves, and I will see you at the next cup.